Algebra 1 EOC review. You're going to need two things as you watch this um, review video. You're going to need your review notes packet and the Algebra 1 EOC pretest. We're going to go back and forth between these two packets. Remember, pause the video at any time so you can catch up with the work because I'm going to go pretty quickly. All right, we are reviewing polynomials. So adding polynomials, remember you're just going to drop the parentheses and combine like terms. So you're going to rewrite your first expression plus your second expression without the parentheses. Then you're going to combine your like terms. So notice as I'm combining, I am crossing out what I am putting together. You can only combine terms that have the same variable exponent term. <clears throat> And then notice at the end that I rewrite the order so it's what we call in standard form with the biggest exponent term first and then the ones that are smaller following after it. Let's look at subtracting polynomials. So remember you're going to distribute the negative to the second polynomial and then add them. So you're simply going to rewrite your first polynomial and then notice that I put a negative 1 there. So you're going to distribute that. All the signs will change. Now combine like terms. So notice I'm combining my x cubed terms. I have crossed off. I'm looking at the sign directly in front of my term to know whether I should add or subtract. And then finally, I just am going to rearrange my terms so that they are in standard form. When multiplying polynomials, remember, <clears throat> you're going to distribute if you have a term that's in front of the parentheses. And when you distribute and multiply, you actually add the exponents and then combine like terms if you need to. So look what I've done so far. I have distributed the 3x squared to the 4x cubed. 3 times 4 is 12. When I multiply x squared times x cubed, I'm going to add those exponents so it becomes x to the fifth. Then I get 15x to the, and let's see, the fourth, and then I'll distribute my 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, and then I just have my x squared. I take one last look to see if I have any <clears throat> variable terms that are repeated that I can combine. And if I don't, then I know that I have multiplied and then simplified. Now let's look at dividing. No, we're still going to look at multiplying polynomials. So sometimes you're going to multiply a binomial, that's two terms, times another binomial. When, you're, when you multiply those, you distribute each term in the first polynomial to each term in the second. So when you have these two binomials together, there are two special methods that you can think of. One of them is the box method, which I'm going to show you first. So you draw a box and then you place each of your terms. If it's positive, you don't put a sign, but if, we, if it's subtraction or negative, the sign goes with it. Then you're going to multiply what is above each of the inner boxes. So the first term would be 8x squared, then moving to the right, negative 20x, then dropping down 14x, and to the right, negative 35. Notice I have circled my 14x and my negative 20x because they are alike and I can combine them. So when I rewrite this as a polynomial, I'm going to combine those two. I subtract, so I get 8x squared minus 6x minus 35. Now you may like just distributing or the FOIL method. FOIL is just simply an acronym to help you remember how to multiply all the terms together. So first you're going to multiply the first terms together then the outer, then the inner, and then the last. So look as I do this. First terms together, 8x squared. <clears throat> outer terms together is 14x. Inner is a negative 20x. And then last terms is negative 35. And here I've labeled those arcs for you so you can see. Again, that's just to help you remember how to get everything multiplied together. And then I'm going to do just like I did with the box method and combine my like terms. And I'll get the same answer. Let's talk about dividing polynomials. When you divide, you need to take each numerator over each of the denominator, the term you're dividing by. And then you're going to simplify 
and use those rules of exponents. So our first term, 6x to the fourth divided by 2x squared, I'm going to divide out those numbers and then subtract the exponents. So 4 minus 2 is 2. The bigger exponent was in the numerator, so I end up with the x squared in the numerator. If nothing is left then in the numerator or denominator, it's the number 1. So see how I have written that down there. Now the second term we divide out and we get 4, just a single x. The third term is 6 over. Now if you look at the third term, notice that it's x over x squared. 2 minus 1 is 1, but my bigger exponent started in my denominator, so that's where my term ends up. And then minus 2 over x squared. Now I'm just going to write that <clears throat> in a simplified way. So I don't need to put the 1's in the denominator. I don't need to put the 1 by the 4x to the first power, because um, that's if there's just 1x there, it means it's to the first power. Um, <clears throat> and there it is, simplified. Sometimes you're going to be asked to factor out what's called a greatest common factor, or a GCF. So you're going to look for the biggest number that will divide into all the terms and then the largest number of variables that all the terms have in common. So our first example, we've got 15x cubed minus 10x squared plus 5x. So I notice that a 5 will divide into each of those. I also notice that they each contain at least one x term. So I can divide out or factor out a greatest common factor of 5x. Now the way we write that is we put that common factor to the front, we open a parenthesis, and then put what we would have left after we divided out each of those. So when I take 15 divided by 5, see how I'm left with 3. <clears throat> 3 minus 1 is 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And then my exponents, 5x divided by 5x is 1. Now in the next example, I notice that I have a 2 that will divide into each of those terms. And then I cannot divide a variable out because my last term does not have a variable. So it's not, I don't have a common variable term. So I simply write the 2 to the front. And then... I put what I have left in each of the terms once I have divided out by the 2. And that's factoring out a greatest common factor. Now in your packet, <clears throat> your pretest packet, turn to number 6 and let's work this. So the area in square units of a rectangle is represented by that polynomial. If the width in units is 2x, what is the length in units? This is actually a pretty easy problem. You just have to remember that area of a rectangle equals length times width. So if we want to know what the length is, we can simply divide both sides by the width. So to find the length, I just need to take the, the polynomial that is my area and divide it by the polynomial that represents the width. So we're going to do just what we did in the last example. We're going to divide each of those terms by 2x. And then we'll divide out the numbers. So 6 divided by 2 is 3. x to the third power dividing out x to the first power is x to the second. And my second term I just get a negative 1x and then plus 2 over x. And then on your test, there would have been a box for you to enter this answer in, and you would want to label it as length. We aren't given any specific unit of measure, like centimeters or inches. So you would simply say length. Now go back to your notes packet, and let's work these problems. So the first one, remember, is just adding polynomials. They are both in parentheses, so you can just drop the parentheses and combine your like terms. So I'm rewriting without my parentheses, and now I'm going to combine my, my like terms just working left to right. So I'm looking for any other x to the fourths, and I don't see any. Then I look for x squareds, and I notice I have negative 7 plus 2 more, so that I give me negative 5. And now I'm combining my x terms, which would be a negative 1x, <clears throat> positive 3, and then just my 3 times x to the fifth. 
Now I'm going to rewrite this in standard form. So my biggest exponent term goes first, and then I just work my way down. Now when you're subtracting, remember you rewrite the first polynomial, but then you need to distribute that negative across your second polynomial. So all of the signs are going to change. And then we're going to combine like terms, just working left to right. So I'm scanning for other x cubes, and I see them. And then I'm scanning for x squareds, so I have positive 6 plus 8 more, so 14x squareds. Now I'm looking for my other x terms, so I have a negative 13x, and then finally plus 5. And then I notice that it's in standard form, so I just go ahead and call it done. Let's continue looking at number 3. So now we're going to move to multiplication. I have set up the box to multiply this by. So it's a 2 by 2 box, and I'm putting my terms in there. So 12x minus 2 across the top. 12x plus a 1 along the side. Then I'm going to multiply what is above each of my inner boxes. After I do that, I'm going to locate my like terms and combine those for my answer of b. When I divide my polynomial, I'm going to use that method of rewriting each term with my divisor underneath it. Then I'm going to take each term and divide the numbers out first and then the variables. So my first term would be 12 divided by 2, or 6x squared, and then minus 3x, and then this would actually be just a plus 1. So plus 1. All right, a couple more. So let's practice factoring out a greatest common factor. So if you look at each of those and you're thinking about what will divide too well, but always look for the greatest, the biggest number. And I notice that four divides into each of those. I also notice that um, there's no common variable, so I can't factor a variable out. <clears throat> so I'll simply put the four out front and then rewrite each of those terms after I have divided each of them by four. Now, finally, we want to factor the quadratic equation. So that's going to use our trinomial factoring method. So I'm going to set up my little x to help me organize my numbers. Okay, I locate my a, b, and c values, and I'm looking for two numbers that will multiply <clears throat> to give me a times c and combine to give me b. And I notice that negative 9 and 2 will do that. So now I'm going to rewrite my given term <clears throat> polynomial using those two numbers to split up the middle term. And now I'm going to group the first two and the second two together with that little line that I have drawn in the middle. So I'm back to greatest common factor. I can factor out a 3x from the first two terms. And now I look at the second two terms. I can factor out a positive 2. I look once again for a greatest common factor and notice that I have x minus 3 and I divide that out to the front and I see that I'm left with 3x plus 2 and I've done it. We have factored. All right, this concludes your review on polynomials for the end of course assessment. You can talk to your teacher um, to get some more example problems or Google any of these topics for extra practice.